Uh, this is a seminar on modern uh, neurocognitive technologies. The seminar takes place in the form of uh, pre-recorded videos and online seminars, as well as in the form of online experiments in real time on different platforms. The seminar topics are uh, applied uh, cognitive psychology, uh, neurocognitive studies of uh, various uh, stage of consciousness using uh, devices and biofeedback. Today uh, we have uh, such an online seminar which is dedicated to seven uh, specific techniques uh, for working with instrumental feedback. First of all, uh, many thanks for attending the seminar. Uh, we have uh, several speakers for uh, August 2020. Um, please uh, turn off your mic if you are not speaking at the moment. And um, questions and comments are welcome at any time. But please uh, discussion better at the end of the seminar. Just to mention, uh, we have uh, running uh, in parallel a national seminar. Uh, for instance, this presentation exists in three parts, which match more details. Um, the community is quite strong. Uh, there is a lot of development inside. Uh, we will try to translate as much as we can from the national seminar. What is the main idea of this seminar? We have three uh, areas uh, related to human consciousness. The first one consider it from the psychology side, for instance, neuro-linguistic programming, uh, cognitive psychology, and then similar areas. The second one deals with ultra-weak uh, biophysical interactions, uh, neuro-cognitive research, uh, and corresponding sensitive measurement uh, technologies like uh, EEG, uh, different forms of spectroscopy, Kirlian effect, and similar. And the last uh, area uh, is related to self-development. For instance, uh, yoga, Qigong, uh, Reiki, uh, different techniques from India, Tibet, and China, um, lucid dreaming, and then similar approaches. And all of them uh, consider consciousness from uh, different sides. And unfortunately, there are not too many interactions uh, between all three areas. The idea is to combine um, different approaches from uh, psychology, uh, modern uh, measurement uh, technologies and uh, self-development for more uh, complementary consideration of unusual uh, human uh, capabilities. Uh, this area of research uh, started early in the uh, 20th century. Most intensive de development uh, was started uh, from the 70s for applying instrumental methods for studying unusual status of uh, human consciousness. And uh, the seminar uh, represents uh, this uh, approach on the modern level uh, with uh, modern uh, devices. The seminar is mostly intended for uh, researchers who use in uh, laboratories uh, different uh, biofeedback uh, and instrumental uh, feedback technologies. But we also try to uh, formulate all, all these methods as practical exercises that can be applied in uh, different real situations. It was a short uh, introduction to the seminar, and I'm uh, starting now with a topic uh, exploring unusual consciousness phenomena with uh, device-based feedback, and uh, will focus on seven uh, concrete uh, neurocognitive techniques. This uh, presentation is a part of a larger lecture. Um, I show here only uh, basic uh, steps and uh, techniques and uh, removed all uh, supporting slide, uh, statistic and uh, publication. For uh, more details, uh, I recommend uh, referring uh, to this larger lecture or uh, to the publications. Uh, technique uh, 1 to 5 uh, are of experimental nature. Uh, they have a large number of confirmation from uh, different laboratories. Techniques um, 6 and 7 uh, contain uh, experimental components uh, regarding embodiment and re-embodiment. Um, in fact, they only uh, indicate a possible direction for further research. 
um, this experimental nature must be taken into account uh, when we will uh, talk about these techniques. We uh, start with uh, cognitive psychology, with mental modeling and neurocognitive models. Our brain uses uh, sensor data from objective reality for modeling. Uh, for instance, for uh, generalizing observation, for creating uh, creative imagination, for trans states, uh, meditation, uh, all uh, mental efforts that uh, generate cognitive, neurocognitive models. Why neurocognitive? Uh, because um, they uh, integrate our experience. Uh, we can generate new experience based on that models. Uh, they uh, process, uh, store and use different sensing uh, and uh, uh, and actuating components from our behavior. So it's a complex structure that uh, generate what we call a subjective reality for us. Um, this uh, subjective reality uh, can be selected uh, as a, as a input uh, source of data by the brain again and uh, used in the modeling for updating models uh, in turn updating reality again as a sensor input. And so this is an endless uh, loop uh, that uh, used uh, by our mental organization for different purposes, for instance, um, learning, uh, adapting behavior. Uh, here we can even uh, generate some illusion and can go to the, uh, get lost in this illusion. So it's a, a part of our psychical organization. For us, it's important um, that brain uh, can use both uh, as a sensor input from objective reality and from subjective reality. Um, and they are used in the neurocognitive models. So uh, it seems that uh, neurocognitive models are central uh, uh, when we work with uh, objective or subjective realities. Our brain is um, really uh, brilliant in uh, combining uh, objective and uh, subjective. And um, one example is Tulpa. Um, this is an uh, old uh, technique, um, huge uh, community in different countries, so this effect definitely exists. And uh, this is about um, creating an uh, imaginary friend. And um, this uh, virtual structure behave uh, fully autonomously, in many cases even uh, unpredictable. And it seems the brain uh, maintain not only the main uh, personality, uh, but also can maintain uh, uh, personality of a uh, virtual friend. Uh, for us, it's important. Um, that this represent uh, this neurocognitive model uh, represent a kind of augmented reality uh, for a human person that combines both uh, subjective and objective. And uh, person even uh, do not see uh, any differences uh, between, between objective and subjective. And here uh, there are a lot of really interesting research questions. Uh, for instance, uh, what is the relationship between subjective and objective? Um, how this uh, relationship uh, influence the behavior of a person, can it be used in some practical uh, techniques uh, for learning and adaptation, and a lot of similar questions. In our research, uh, we also consider a connected augmented reality. Uh, consisting of subjective part and objective part. And it is important, it should be exactly the same object uh, in uh, this part and in this part as well. The question uh, what we consider is a uh, uh, neurocognitive modeling as a process. It uh, change uh, models and uh, change uh, subjective part of augmented reality. And the question is, uh, what is happening with the connected uh, real part of this reality? Uh, we should say it's a purely experimental approach. Uh, we use the following methodology. Here, um, measurement devices are connected to real object. We receive an objective feedback uh, to our person. Uh, person receives objective feedback. It integrates these changes in the models, uh, in the subjective part, and in this way, uh, the person can explore what is the dependency between this part and this part by observing uh, the real-time feedback. 
Um, most interesting issues here, as a first of all, it's a uh, objective verification with different uh, measurement devices. So we avoid here any speculations about this um, this topic. The second, uh, we see a clear dependency with uh, near cognitive process or with a mental state of this person. There's always two ways interactions. Um, uh, between uh, both realities and uh, and models and new topic what we consider um, it says uh, physical embodiment of this neurocognitive model itself so whether they can uh, behave quite independently of its uh, generating process from the practical point of view uh, we consider here the trainability uh, the whole process for a person to work with augmented reality is uh, trainable uh, and uh, we here we need two feedback one feedback uh, for um, uh, for uh, near cognitive process uh, and second feedback through the whole loop uh, from uh, from the real part of augmented reality the uh, question about uh, dependency between uh, objective reality and subjective reality um, usually is answered in the way they are fully independent moreover the objective uh, reality is always primary and the subjective is a secondary so we was uh, teach it to answer this question in exactly this way uh, however, we think um, uh, the dependency uh, between uh, objective part and subjective part for the case of uh, mentally connected augmented reality should be explored uh, in experimental way. It is an object of experimental validation. And uh, this is an experiment with a Qigong master. Um, he uh, uh, make an attempt to influence uh, measurement devices inside of this room and uh, there is no uh, electromagnetic uh, way for uh, transferring the influence, no magnetic way and uh, also essential delay in the heat propagation from this side of the room to the side with sensors. Um, uh, this experiment was performed uh, in uh, ENN facility um, sensors inside uh, the room um, were placed in two thermo-insulating containers. We used uh, four uh, electrochemical sensors, four thermochemical sensors, four uh, temperature sensors inside uh, containers, and several other uh, sensors for recording environmental parameters. Um, all uh, sensors uh, recorded uh, data the whole night. Uh, Qigong uh, master in Lanfang entered the room at 9.15 and uh, used this time for preparation and uh, started the session at 9.30. Um, the session uh, uh, looked like as shown here, so he was standing close to the room uh, with a closed eye and uh, used a, a kind of mental concentration on the sensors and we demonstrated him the images of sensors. Uh, the behavior of uh, sensors is shown here. We observe a uh, correlation and uh, correlation between behavior of all electrochemical and thermochemical sensors exactly at the moment when he started the session. So we, uh, in other words, we observe a correlation between the begin of the modeling process in uh, subjective part uh, with a change of the behavior of real sensor in objective part of this uh, mentally connected augmented reality. Um, choose if we uh, return back uh, to the equation uh, between uh, relationship of uh, objective part and subjective part, it is not always uh, so easy to answer. In several cases, we observe a clear dependency between mental modeling process and uh, the behavior of object in a real environment. For exploration of such cases in systematic way, uh, we use uh, the setup uh, with uh, two feedback loops. Uh, one feedback loops uh, uh, is on the local level and uh, provides the feedback from EG sensors. Here uh, the idea is to um, select uh, specific uh, stages of consciousness uh, and to train them. 
uh, for instance, we uh, distinguish between four uh, specific uh, stages as a weak alternate stage of consciousness, uh, relaxation, uh, deep meditation and active meditation. They have a characteristic pattern of all brain waves. And uh, observation is that uh, active meditation uh, contribute uh, to uh, this phenomena. And operator, uh, they have to train exactly at this uh, active meditation stage. Um, this uh, local uh, uh, feedback uh, provides uh, the data in real time, for instance, as acoustic feedback. And the global feedback loop uh, used uh, impedance uh, spectroscopy. Um, so we use uh, two different uh, spectroscopy systems. One is uh, electrochemical impedance and another one is um, optical observation spectroscopy. So electrochemical system involve multiple, uh, multiple uh, quantum effects. Um, and the current assumption that uh, probably uh, all these phenomena are connected on the quantum level. Uh, electrochemical system uh, provide uh, data about uh, mobility and number of ions, uh, about um, change of temperature in the fluid, about uh, thermochemical behavior, and about uh, thermodynamics, um, the change of temperature in the local environment. We always use uh, multiple such systems uh, for accumulation of statistics. Another methodological consideration is related to uh, difficulty levels in the modeling task. Uh, the first level appear if the operator can touch the object or at least can see the object of concentration at the distance about five to seven meters. Uh, effects are most intensively represented in this case, but thermal effects are other possible. Uh, they should be carefully removed from experimental setup. Um, and on the second level of complexity, operator uh, does not see the object of concentration, but he or she receives our real-time feedback in general some information about the object. Uh, we use information from uh, devices uh, that is electronically uh, transferred over the internet. So in this case, uh, really long uh, distances are possible. On the street level of complexity, operator uh, does not see the object of concentration and does not receive any feedback. This is a really uh, challenging case. Some experts um, meet uh, this uh, case in a real situation, and there are even some books uh, that uh, describe such attempts. Uh, the last level of complexity appears uh, if the operator uh, does not see the object of concentration and also does not receive any feedback, but additionally incorporate our intention into the modeling process. Finally, we end up with seven practical techniques um, trainable with instrumental feedback, what I mentioned in the beginning of this presentation. Um, we uh, separated them into two blocks, uh, simple and complex, and um, techniques uh, that uh, require uh, mental discipline and long-term motivation from operators. Uh, the first block uh, is, uh, in fact, obtained uh, from uh, four difficulties level uh, mentioned in the previous slide. Technique number five uh, exploits uh, two ways uh, interactions um, uh, for reading out information from subjective and objective parts of reality and perform synchronization of models. Uh, there is enough uh, information uh, published about this method, though I will not mention it here. Uh, number uh, six and seven are considered as a possible indicator for uh, further research. Uh, we have some uh, experimental evidences for uh, their plausibility, uh, but uh, both uh, require further intensive uh, research. Now I will show examples for all these techniques and start with the first one. Uh, training uh, the focus of attention, or in another terminology, uh, creation of a neurocognitive model. Um, typically, uh, sensors uh, and operators are placed in two different laboratories. We have two uh, setups, the first local one 
at the distance about uh, 10 15 uh, meters between them uh, with multiple concrete walls so we fully exclude um, thermal or electromagnetic effects and uh, the um, uh, long uh, distance setup uh, at the distance uh, about three kilometers um, sensors are recording uh, continuously all the time operator enter the room for operators uh, a couple minutes uh, before the experiment um, they uh, start a preparation mm, for instance here are the uh, typical uh, example for uh, relaxation uh, stage uh, of an operator and uh, they uh, start an, uh, the experiment uh, experiment typically take uh, between um, 10 and uh, 30 minutes. Uh, brain waves are also recorded and here we observe a typical pattern for active meditation where the uh, operator uh, first uh, mentally concentrate uh, on the object of concentration then use a visual feedback for updating model then again the concentration and we observe a clear correlation between the beginning of this uh, mental concentration task and the response of real sensors um, of interest is that not only the start point is uh, correlated but also end of the um, uh, concentration task is also correlated uh, with another um, uh, change of the trend uh, of electrochemical sensors. So here important is uh, exactly this correlation between concentration time and the response. Uh, the first and the second is a statistical repeatability because this can be a random uh, change in the behavior. So we need to perform uh, multiple uh, repetitive uh, tests. Uh, typically, uh, we use a 30 iteration for one block if operator perform at once per day so we need uh, one month for a block of experiments results in the blocks are uh, evaluated in a numerical uh, probabilistic and statistic ways um, and here are um, random uh, experiments or so results of three um, criteria for uh, random experiments and for experiments with a concentration of attention from the last years and we see a clear difference uh, at all three uh, criteria uh, these results are published up to now we performed uh, a few hundreds of such experiments uh, the uh, setup and methodology are fully automated uh, they can be performed individually at laboratories at, and uh, publicly on the web and the aqua PC is one example of such fully automated experiments and um, uh, we uh, see uh, really many hundreds of attempts so uh, totally a large number of statistically uh, significant results and we already started the process of their publications technique one and technique two are similar we always uh, suggest uh, starting uh, with uh, short distances and then step by step to increase the distance uh, now we will uh, proceed with uh, technique three uh, modeling uh, intentions and incorporating intention into the subjective models how it's work uh, operator uh, perform uh, modeling in the um, uh, augmented mentally augmented reality with the subjective parts and uh, start to change a mental model and they observe an objective part of this uh, mentally augmented reality and um, uh, operator uh, try to find uh, find some uh, changes of the model that can induce corresponding changes uh, of real objects here uh, capabilities of devices are limited uh, we can uh, record only two opposite intention in electrochemical reaction the, their intensity can be increased uh, or decreased to some extent and we can observe this as a change of the trend in uh, graphs and uh, operator is a try first to learn how to induce a change in one way and then in another way um, and for instance in the electrochemical dynamics such a trend is impossible to generate in a random uh, as a random dynamics uh, the success rate uh, for um, uh, technique one and two is between 70 and 90 percent here is much lower because complexity of this task is very high you know, it requires really a lot of time uh, for learning this exercise can be performed in uh, many different ways 
for instance here operator concentrated one channel and try to induce the several uh, changes one after another um, here is the same diagram but in colors uh, different uh, channels operator in one channel induced uh, reducing of electrochemical reactions uh, and another uh, channel is used for increasing the intensity of electrochemical reaction and this will visible as this uh, different uh, color trend and the time uh, difference between two attempts is about uh, 10 minutes very short time here is the same in one channel but operator use uh, mental representation as uh, minus uh, minus and plus and uh, in this example as um, uh, uptrend and downtrend so that's always as uh, internal representation at uh, all operators is uh, is completely different and here for instance the difference between two attempts is about 20 minutes um, for such exercises uh, frequently uh, plants are frequently used as sensors they are quite sensitive for this task. Almost all experiments are performed in the 80s and 90s uh, very using uh, plant um, as sensors. Here is a, a replication of such attempts. Uh, we are recording um, uh, conductivity of tissues. And operator was sitting here uh, the, the whole time. And at this moment, um, he uh, starts a mental modeling. He was receiving uh, uh, feedback uh, from uh, from that device, and at this time he changed uh, pattern uh, modeling pattern, and uh, he uh, here stopped, and he here uh, left the room. And we observe uh, a visual changes of trend of tissue conductivity at uh, each of this point. So and can correlate the mental task of operator with a change of tissue conductivity of uh, the plant. The technique 4 uh, conceptually uh, differs from uh, previous techniques and is related to so-called active symbols and integration uh, in the modeling process. Um, we know that uh, symbols are frequently used uh, in uh, different uh, social and cult cultural contexts, uh, from uh, religion ones uh, in the healing, uh, in self-development, for instance here, are six yoga of Naropa and uh, using uh, specific symbols is required uh, in uh, these techniques. So the hypothesis here that if the operator integrate in the mental modeling process active symbols, not all symbols are active, then um, uh, this uh, will have unusual effects on physical and uh, biological system. It needs here to underline um, uh, this uh, topic uh, requires experimental verification to avoid any kind of speculations. Um, we uh, performed uh, such experiments uh, quite a long time, about five years, uh, with a different series of attempts. Uh, for instance, using graphical symbols, uh, using uh, text uh, symbols, and uh, multiple control attempts uh, with operator, without operator. Operator are reading uh, different neutral text uh, just to avoid uh, artifacts in uh, such experiments. Um, here is a typical screenshot from uh, automated experiments. Um, uh, electrochemical dynamics is shown in uh, background uh, measurement region and uh, experimental region. Uh, deviations uh, are expressed in a numerical form as psi and pro values and are represented as graphical diagrams for operators. They can observe uh, this diagram and use them as uh, visual feedback in training exercises. Uh, immediate uh, result what we receive is active symbols, in this case Reiki, that experiments uh, when operator integrate Reiki symbols in the modeling process are much stronger. In uh, statistics, um, we perform uh, five uh, series of experiments, each series one month, so, uh, with a random attempt, uh, three months uh, with different uh, distance influences, and uh, one block uh, with distant Reiki attempts. And uh, we see that uh, Reiki are statistically much stronger 
uh, then uh, if the operator do not use this active symbols in the modeling process. Another interesting result with Reiki is related to weak altered states of consciousness. Um, as I already said, operators in uh, such states are not uh, producing any measurable uh, effects on electrochemical sensors. But if operators are using them, and uh, we see a clear uh, deviation uh, in the behavior of sensors during the time if, uh, if operators uh, use um, uh, Reiki symbols in the modeling process. So influence of the operator with Reiki techniques are, is visible even in weak altered stage of consciousness, where usually uh, mental influences are not uh, recorded. So this produces a lot of open and interesting questions. For instance, it seems that uh, operators are not uh, responsible for uh, such changes. Uh, symbols are uh, responsible, but uh, where the, this effect of symbols is coming from, if not from the operator. Comparing um, different experiments with a symbolic system, we can make two conclusions. Um, the first conclusion is related to cases uh, without operators and with operators um, who are reading uh, neutral text. We see that even uh, if operators are not focused on the main uh, task but are in the context of the experiment, this is already enough to have a small effect on sensors. The second conclusion is related to uh, comparing a symbolic experiment and control attempt. By calibrating control uh, to zero, we see a significantly stronger experiment uh, with mantras and, uh, and priors. And, uh, and the programmable uh, symbolic mechanism, what I will uh, discuss in the next slide. And uh, this uh, creates an open question about the uh, origin of this effect, whether uh, symbols are linked to some hidden capabilities of human consciousness or they are external to human consciousness. After considering uh, techniques one to four uh, with several examples and uh, practical experimental results, uh, the question is what is their final goal and where they are leading to? Um, this is a normal question for research where we try to identify some potentially interesting goals and research fields and uh, then try to explore them. However, here we discovered another dimension uh, represented by operators who practice these techniques. Uh, they were interested in uh, specific uh, questions um, appearing from practical side. And uh, finally, this uh, technique 6 and 7 appears as a combination of uh, potentially interesting research goals and uh, several uh, questions asked by operators. For understanding the technique uh, 6, we return um, to the slide um, uh, about uh, mentally connected augmented reality, um, about neurocognitive models that generate this structure. And uh, in turn, these neurocognitive models that are created by the modeling process in the brain. Exactly because of this modeling process, a common assumption is this, that models are uh, contained in the brain, so they have a physical embodiment in the brain of the operator. Um, we know that uh, in uh, this field of research, uh, some equations are not so obvious. And uh, here we explore one interesting hypothesis about um, physical embodiment of such neurocognitive models. Namely, uh, if uh, the model can be uh, to some extent independent uh, from this uh, generating process, so if it is one time uh, generated, so if it can exist uh, more or less autonomously with some basic cognitive functionality. So in the uh, terminology of uh, cognitive psychology, we explore the exteriorization process uh, of near cognitive models. And again, uh, this is an experimental approach that we are going to explore and experiment with devices and instrumental feedback. This um, hypothesis was test tested in the following way. Um, operator uh, generate a mental model and then try to um, transfer this model uh, to the subject. So he uh, tried to make a re-embodiment of the model from, uh, let's say, our brain uh, to this object. 
Um, this model contains the simplest uh, program uh, with the stimuli. If the stimuli is on, then uh, uh, put some influence on uh, the uh, sensor. Um, if the operator uh, he performed the programming about 10-15 um, minutes, after this he left the room for one two days. He was not uh, in connection uh, with uh, this object. Uh, stimuli was periodically activated one time uh, per day, uh, one time per 12 hour, one, while, uh, one time per 6 hours. And um, uh, we tested um, whether LED, uh, it was a small LED, small current LED, whether LED can influence uh, directly the sensor uh, or some empty object can influence the sensor with and without LED. So in this control attempts, we did not record any uh, changes of the behavior of the sensors. In experiments, when LED was activated, so when stimulus is activated, uh, we uh, see a change of the behavior. And uh, if the stimulus is disactivated, we uh, again uh, receive a change in the behavior. Um, this um, very nice response was repeated uh, two, three times, usually. Um, in total, we uh, can uh, register up to six, seven activation after this effect completely disappear. So we observe a gradual disappearance of the effect after initial programming. Um, this experiment was repeated multiple number of times. This is one of the latest attempts uh, with uh, multiple uh, thermo-insulating uh, containers. Uh, this uh, container has this programmable object and small current LED. Uh, the behavioral prog uh, program has a form if light on then impact sensors in one of these containers else sleep. Uh, experimental uh, methodology was changed to a periodical uh, programming of the uh, object by operator. So, uh, operator program it and we record a number of successful activation by stimulus. Then next day, uh, operator program it again, and so we receive a dependency uh, between the number of activations uh, to the number of programming attempts. Uh, generally, we uh, record the same behavior as in the previous cases. Here uh, is uh, LED is activated. Uh, we receive a response um, after a short uh, time. Uh, then in the next activation, uh, we receive again a change of the trend. And so uh, this behavior is well repeated a few times after initial activations. Um, but uh, generally we uh, observe, uh, like in previous cases, a gradual disappearance of the effect after initial programming. Uh, we tried to uh, apply different uh, techniques here, for instance, using uh, symbols to amplify the effect. Uh, in total, uh, we um, uh, record a good uh, repeatability of uh, experiments um, in uh, such setup. This experiment indicated that a part of a um, neurocognitive model can be exteriorized and receive a form of non-biological embodiment with elements of computational, cognitive and uh, physical functionality. Uh, the big question is, uh, where is then our consciousness? Which uh, part of the structure uh, contained our consciousness? Uh, we know that um, for consciousness important is uh, cognitive and computational functionality uh, which are contained in our brain, uh, physical and sensory motor functionality uh, that uh, contained in our body, so this create a biological embodiment. Uh, for consciousness is important is a modeling process and the models both in more abstract and more body related part and uh, we know that a part of this model can be exercised. So our assumption is that um, uh, consciousness is spread over the whole structure, over the different components with different functionality and the whole structure as a whole that uh, creates the phenomenon of consciousness that we know. Um, the question is, uh, what will happen if one part of the structure will disappear, for instance, we will lose our biological embodiment, whether this non-biological embodiment is still capable for maintaining functionality of our consciousness. 
This uh, philosophical uh, question uh, lead us to the concrete technique seven uh, related to re-embodiment um, from biological to non-biological structure. Um, this approach is frequently mentioned in uh, different sources on self-development uh, in uh, Tantric Buddhism, uh, for instance, Six Yogas of Naropa, Dzogchen and similar sources. One of frequently um, mentioned problem is so-called unstable uh, non-biological embodiment. We also have the same observations in our experiments where programmable objects are unstable and they disappear after a while after initial programming. It seems that um, uh, these sources uh, developed uh, uh, some way uh, to resolve this problem even uh, during physical life. Uh, so-called short uh, way in Tantric Buddhism. In experiments we also see uh, possible indications uh, for a way to stabilize uh, non-biological non embodiment. Exactly this problem was of interest for uh, our operators. They essentially contributed to development of this uh, technique. From a scientific point of view, uh, we probably meet here a possible non-biological evolution related to re-embodiment of our consciousness. This is the last slide, um, just to give a brief overview about possible approaches for the Technique 7. Uh, we call it uh, training of non-biological cognitivity. It starts uh, with creating such non-biological structure by using one of yogas, uh, for instance, yoga, tuma or kundalini yoga, and then a training of uh, basic cognitive skills. It's very similar what we uh, done in our childhood, uh, touching object, uh, feeling, uh, developing uh, different sensing and uh, motor uh, capabilities. And here um, device based feedback can be integrated. Um, first of all, uh, to uh, for reality check uh, to see whether the whole structure is uh, illusion and created by our uh, subjective modeling process, or we have here at least some uh, components uh, related to reality. Uh, then here we can train specific activities. For instance, this graph was uh, generated in situations like this uh, for uh, testing one of specific activities for of non-biological structure. Uh, generally, uh, operators train mostly with different real situations or an other person is entering a non-biological embodiment and they start multiple subjective reality, for instance, collective lucid dreams or uh, some teaching exercises. Here uh, we meet um, already some mystic dimension of this Technique 7. A general conclusion. Um, uh, we uh, represented seven specific techniques, um, uh, one to five uh, have uh, many hundreds of experiments in uh, different laboratories, publication, and we think their main application should be for the operator for self-development purposes. And of course, this requires a lot of mental discipline and long-term motivation. But ultimate goal, um, we and, uh, and operators think that the immortality of consciousness, possible immortality, should represent this highest goal. Of course, a lot of questions. Uh, we can repeat again as uh, sources of uh, Tantric Buddhism saying that uh, stabilizing this non-biological embodiment can be achieved during the life, but it needs uh, learning and uh, active training. Uh, instrumental methods can essentially help here, uh, first of all, uh, removing and bypassing some of illusions and speeding up the progress. And about techniques uh, 6 and 7, of course, a lot of open questions, uh, but we think uh, they are possible uh, and they are not developed by evolutionary mechanism. We need, need to develop them from scratch and probably they represent unclear uh, non-biological evolution uh, with a lot of implication even from a philosophical side. This was a short presentation for the seminar. Some points may sound unusual or do not fit into the framework of classical ideas. Exactly here, uh, instrumental feedback shows its usefulness uh, in separating the real from the illusory and enabling uh, to focus on real processes. Uh, in general, uh, if you have uh, any questions, please uh, post them in comments and welcome to the next seminar.